Well, welcome to this program, Faith to Change Your World. I'm your host, Bishop Peter Tandam Lenga from Christian Word Center International. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Well, we praise God for another day and another privilege to share with you the Word of the living God. The Word of God is like a double-two-edged sword. It is a double-two-edged sword that pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and we will share the Word, and your life, your world will be changed around because the Word is powerful and living. Well, I'm excited to be in the studios today because I have men of God who have traveled all the way from the United States of America to aid us, to help us, to stand in faith with us for the execution of God's word in our nation, Zambia. On the immediate right is uh, Pastor Ron Crons, all the way from Washington, D.C. Um, please allow me to ask him to give us an opening remark. Yeah, yeah. Welcome so, to Zambia. Well, thank you. It's good to be back to Zambia. I've been here many times, and it's always a pleasure to be here. It's especially a pleasure to be in a nation that acknowledges that we are a Christian nation, that we must have Christ to rule over us. So I'm looking forward to a good interview today. And on my far right is none other than Reverend Jason K. Wood. Yes. And uh, he will... Uh, give us his opening remarks, and then from there we'll dive in into God's Word. Sure. Thank you, Bishop. It's good to be back in the real Africa here in Zambia. Uh, I have grown to, to love this country. Uh, I've been here. This is now my third time being here, and Lord willing, I'll be uh, back in the future, but it's a, a great blessing to be with you and to open up God's Word to talk about some very important concepts today. Uh, so I'm thankful for the opportunity. Well, today we want to talk about dominion mandate. And the Bible does tell us that he, God created man in his own image. And God has given us power and the mandate to dominate, to have dominion on the face of the earth in three dimensions. He says, over every creeping thing that creepeth on the face of the earth. And he also told us, to have dominion of every fowl that flies in the air. But he also tells us to have dominion over the fish that swimmeth in the sea. Yet Jesus himself said, All power, all authority in heaven and on earth is given unto me. And I want to bring this discussion to open up. And please stay tuned, because in the middle of this discussion, we want to pray with you for your world to change and come to alignment with God. Uh, Pastor Ron Crohn's. Yes, pleasure to be Dominion here. Dominion mandate. Yes, indeed. Jesus Dominion said, mandate. all power is given unto me. He, that's what he said. All power has been yes, given please. me in heaven and on earth. Just help us Go understand. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. But that's not actually the introduction. That's, the, that's what happens after the resurrection. The introduction to the dominion mandate is way back in the first chapter of Genesis. And I'll read in the 26th verse, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. This is the first command of God to man is to be fruitful, to multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and to have dominion. Now, we all know that after the fall, Adam and Eve lost their ability to have this dominion. They were no longer fruitful. In fact, the ground was cursed for their sake. They were no longer able to be fruitful. They were no longer able to have dominion. They became in enemy territory, you might say. But when Jesus came, he broke that curse so that we are no longer in enemy territory, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the Bible says. And he says the meek will inherit the earth. He's, in, he's given the nations 
by the Father, and he's broken that curse. So when he says, mm. all authority is given to me in heaven and earth, go therefore, that's what he's pointing back to. He's saying you lost that ability mm. to be fruitful. You lost that ability mm. to have dominion. You weren't able to do that because of the curse of sin. But I have broken that. I have stepped on the head of Satan. I've reduced him to rubble. He's a defeated foe, and now you're able to do that which you could never do. This is what the whole gospel points forward to, which is God's redemptive plan, not just for individuals, but for people, for families, for nations, for churches, and for the world. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Pastor Johnson, mm. Dominion Monday. Yes, uh, that was chapter one. Chapter two is very interesting because we end up kind of having a more closer to the ground look at what God is doing at creation. And one of the things we see is there's no man to cultivate the ground. So there's a problem. And it's not a problem for God, but it's an it's a interesting note in the scriptures here in Genesis 2. So we know Adam is formed from the dust. God breathes life into him, brings him alive. Uh, there's no helper suitable for him. So we have Eve come on the scene. And then, curiously enough, during that process, by the way, God made Adam, and then he created the garden. Adam's job was to watch God create and beautify and make something beautiful. So Adam was to replicate that into the rest of the world, and he was given a wife, a helper, and, uh, and then he was told, you know, not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, they were to eat of it eventually because that is a symbol of maturity discerning between good and evil. They weren't ready for it, but they seized it before God said it was time. But all the way back in the very beginning, Adam was a priest, and his priestly work was to cultivate the ground. Mm. But he also had a kingly job, and that kingly job was to keep the garden safe. Mm. The serpent shows up. He should have destroyed the serpent. Uh, he should have smashed the serpent's head yeah. and ended the serpent's life. Uh, but he didn't. He didn't have the maturity to discern yet. Um, and that's really where the dominion mandate finds its root in the book of Genesis, where here Adam is given a, a vocation. He's to work and keep. He's to protect and serve. He's to cultivate and enjoy. And then he's given a wife. And not only did he fail to protect the garden from an intruder, he ended up failing in protecting his wife from the intruder. But he was also given a place to live. And so God provides these things for us so that we might uh, obey him and follow him and, and uh, press the crown rights of King Jesus into every area of life. Because once you end up getting to the gospel of Mark, you see we're preaching the gospel to all of creation. And that means the gospel is for all of creation, meaning not just for my heart and soul, but for all things, every area of life is to be brought under the dominion of Jesus Christ who has ascended on high. And from there, he rules and reigns. Don't forget, Daniel tells us yeah. that he saw the vision in Daniel 7, the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days. Mm -hmm. That's not Jesus coming back. That's Jesus going to the Father, to the Ancient of Days. And that is when his kingdom was established. That's his coronation ceremony. And, and that is the dominion that he possesses. Jesus' regime is the only totalitarian regime that there is. Awesome. No state is allowed to have mm -hmm. that. No man, no country, no nation is allowed to have total control. Jesus is the one with total control. I, 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 well, that's an awesome thought right there, Pastor Jason. But I need you to elaborate. I think you did mention in one of, one of you did mention when uh, I think it was Ron Kronz. That mention of Jesus' birth is a wonderful counselor. Mm. And but it says that his, his government shall have no end. I just want you to expand on that. His government shall have no end. Uh, other governments will fall. What, how many types of governments do we have? Mm. What levels of governments do we have as we discuss this awesome subject of dominion mandate? Because you have mentioned right there that he has total authority. Mm -hmm. And he did mention himself that I have power in heaven, on earth, and under. And, and one would like to know the levels of government that we interact with in the, in the, in the earth today. Mm. You want to go first? Yes. The, uh, the Lord institutes four kinds of government. Self-government, civil government, family government, and church government. 
we don't seem to understand that, that uh, we must govern ourselves. We must be able to handle our families as Christian families. We must have Christian churches. And the civil government has its own sphere. All of them are submissive to, to Christ. Wow. And, I want and you to say that again. Because all there is of so, them, because maybe because I, I don't want to let anybody miss that. That's all number one, self-government. Self-government. Family government, number two. Family number government. three, church government. Number four, civil government. Civil government. And, and this is the critical point to understand. All of them must submit. Even back at the fall, what do we see? The Lord comes in the garden. He judges the evil one. The evil one is put on his belly. From the first introduction of Satan to Scripture, he's being subjugated to our God. We must not say, think, and act like the devil is in charge of the world. So we go about our business, and I've been a Christian for a long time. We go about our business as though there was something left undone. Mm -hmm. So when you go to deliverance services, you're breaking the bonds of Satan. That already happened. Mm -hmm. That happened. You, we must bind the strong man. And many a deliverance service spends hours and hours breaking chains that have already been broken. This we see at the advent of Jesus in Isaiah 9 and the sixth verse. And we all know this passage, but it's like we don't read it. For unto us a child is born, yes. unto us a son is given. Yeah. Who could that be but Jesus? It must be Jesus. And the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And to increase that point, of his government. Uh, increase, yeah. there will be no end. But now watch this critical phrase. To, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. What time forward? The time when Christ was born. When Christ was born, he began to subjugate the work of the devil. And when he he finished that work on the cross. He's risen as an open demonstration of that. He's ascended. He's seated. And, and I'm so glad you brought that up, Dr. Jason, is about that the, the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days. This is his ascension, not his mm, return. Mm. So many people are waiting for the return of Jesus Christ, for him to have authority that he already has. They're waiting for him to do something he already did. Now, the problem with that is, is that we're acting mm. like he's, we act in a way like he's not in control. And, and that's a big, big problem. Imagine if you were to act like one day your boss is going to be the boss. Well, then you would act any way that you want to be. No, your boss is wow. the boss today. Awesome. And Jesus is the Lord, the same today, yesterday, and forever. He is the ruler. The Bible says, you look it up for yourself, Revelation 1.5, the ruler of the kings of the earth. They do not have some jurisdiction. And I said this, this uh, I think it was the other the day, yeah. and I'll close with this, is that when human rulers go into a different jurisdiction. Let's say Joe Biden comes to, to, to Zambia. Well, he has to obey the laws of Zambia. Just because he's the president over there doesn't make him the president here. And the same thing could be said of Hishalema. If Hishalema, President Hishalema, goes to the United States, he has to obey the law of the United States. But when Jesus comes, he brings the law with him. Mm. He is the authority, and he brings mm. the government of peace with him from that day forward, even forever. Awesome. Awesome, 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 mm. awesome. Because we are now dealing with dominion mandate. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Faith to Change Your World, and I'm your host, Bishop Peter Tandem Lenga, and with me, I have two gentlemen, two men of God who have come from the U.S. to help us to aid and stand in faith with us for the execution of that dominion mandate in our country. And I want to bring in uh, Reverend Johnson once again. I just want you to elaborate once again from where our Pastor Crohn's has left from. We, we have to execute that dominion mandate and allow Christ to reign. Mm -hmm. And everything has to bow to him. Every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under unto him. I just want you to elaborate on that one. Sure. The dominion mandate, uh, as we see expressed in Genesis, is tied to the Great Commission. 
and that is something that is often overlooked. Mm -hmm. Part of the Great Commission is taking the authority of Christ, going on that authority that he's established, and going into the world. And we don't just win converts and then leave them alone. Uh, we're told to make disciples of the nations, and that verb, making disciples, is the nation. We're supposed to teach people groups. We're supposed to teach nations to follow the, the word of God. We baptize them, and then we teach them the law of God. And I think what uh, Pastor Ron here is, 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 is getting at is that authority comes out in various ways. The dominion isn't domination. It's servant leadership. It's servant sacrifice. It is being a godly man and a godly woman. It is being a godly husband and a godly wife. It is raising godly children, giving them a Christian education and not a statist or humanist, humanist education. Um, it is, 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 is guarding your church from false doctrine. Mm. All right? We're talking about stewardship at those levels, and that is how Christ establishes a foothold in a culture, in mm. a nation, when we are being faithful to his law mm. word mm. and treasuring it. Psalm 19 tells us the law of Yahweh is, is good. It restores mm. the soul. Mm. And it'll restore a nation too once we repent of, of our idols and trash the idols and throw them out and establish through faith and obedience in those, in those governments mm. what it is Christ has, has given us in his word. Awesome. I'm enjoying this uh, topic of Dominion Mandate. We want now to deal with you, our viewers. We want to pray with you. Um, I'm going to ask Ron. There may be somebody who's watching us going through bitter times of life, trying to commit suicide, trying to take their lives. Life has been unfair to them. They are throwing in a towel, and they think this is probably you are sick, whatever the case may be. I'm going to ask Pastor Ron to pray and trust God for our faith in Christ to change the world. Yes. I'll ask uh, Ron to quickly Yes, we're at the pray. end of our time, and uh, I want to be brief with this, but this is such an important thing. You have an eternal soul. You cannot eliminate yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to be somewhere. You're going to be in heaven or you're going to be in hell. And the beauty of the power of God is not just... Uh, that he rose from the dead, although we praise him for that, but that he overcame life and death and every single thing. And so because he lives in the way that he does, he's able to save to the uttermost those who come, come to God through him. Now look that up in the dictionary, that word uttermost, that's completely, that there's no pit of despair from which the Lord cannot redeem, and he will redeem those who turn to him. By no means will he turn them away, even in the book of Acts at Pentecost. He said, the promises to you and to your children mm -hmm. and those who are far off. Are you yes. afar off? Are you afar off? I'm speaking to somebody. You're far off. Even though you're far off, the Bible says those who were far off and without God in the world, outside of the covenant, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus uh, come to him as he is, as the king, the lawgiver, the judge, and the savior. And I'll pray uh, just a word. Uh, dear Father God, I pray for those who may be going through great distress right now and uh, may be at the end of their rope, and they just happen to turn on Jesus. at this moment. It's thank not you. an accident. Shut we thank you for your providence in this, and we pray you, that, that, that no blood will be shed, but that your shed blood will be sufficient. So, oh, Lord, I pray that you will turn the hearts of your people back to you again. Find us where we are as you are, the king, the judge, the lawgiver, and the savior. And we pray this in the most high name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Well, there's a number on the screen which you can get a hold of us if you need further counseling. Uh, more than that, this has been your host, Bishop Peter Tandem Lenga. And please remember these words from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless.